All right, assignment three is our next task. And what we do with it is we take the fantasy landscapes that we've designed, and we're going to use this opportunity to improve them by activating the landscapes by inserting our fantasy creature into the landscape. So the way they come together, we can look at some past student examples. Or some even some past uh, instructor examples. There's a couple steps to it. It seems very simple. We've been using layers a lot. But this is kind of how the process works. First, we have to isolate and combine all the layers of your creature, of your design. Here's just a stolen uh, video game character design. And then we need to figure out what is the lighting that's going to match the environment. Which direction is that lighting? What's the, the temperature of the lighting? Is it warm or cool? And then what kind of shadows are cast onto that environment? So you can see here, this is what's called an overlay layer where everything is middle gray except for the changes that are made to the environment and to the character. And then you simply set that character in your setting. And if you have the lighting right and the shadows right, it will match the setting pretty well. Then we can build atmosphere in front of the character. We can augment the setting a little bit to help, like kick up dust, shift focus, put something underwater, shift color, all that good stuff. Now, the key is not to hide your creature in your setting. Your creature should take up, I'd say, at least 20% of your overall image, right? We don't want to just stick it somewhere hidden in a cave. But we also want it to believably integrate into that scene. Okay, so what happens is, again, we isolate our creature design. And to do that, we need to make sure, by having it on gray, we'll make sure we don't have any artifacts left over from the compositing, which is going to help us improve our creature design. And then we'll do dodging and burning, and we help it fit. And we're going to upload both the overlay layer and the, uh, the composite. So let's get started. How do we go about that? Well, first we go to our assignment two PSD file, the one we just finished up. And we are building assets now that we are putting together into assignment three. So I open up my, my PSD file for assignment two. This is very large and made to print on its own. And then the first thing I'm going to do is uncheck any of these background layers and uncheck my little Pokemon layer there. And then I'm going to say File, Save As, a PNG, just like when we submitted it to photo bucket for assignment two. But this time I'm going to save it to the desktop. Okay. So what that will do is because a PNG supports transparency, it will allow it to be perfectly cut out. But it will also merge all of these layers while still keeping it at very high resolution. So that's step one. And we can see very clearly, we will see when we bring it into our landscape if there's any artifacts left there that we still need to clean up. Okay, now I can turn off or close the Photoshop assignment. I have my PNG here. If I open up that PNG with preview, it will show it on a gray background because it's transparent. And you can see I've done a pretty good job with this. There isn't any kind of debris floating on the outside. There's a little white spot there that maybe shouldn't be there. Maybe the background should peek through there. Otherwise, it's looking pretty clean. So this is what you call a clean plate. And for special effects or for, um, for doing CGI, you're combining different plates into one scene to composite. So this is our first clean plate. 
And if it's not clean at this point, you want to go into assignment two and clean up all the little debris that's off to the side, you know, and get the edges working better. So if your edges are glowing, if they're not soft where they need to be soft and crisp where they need to be crisp, and if they look too dark on some edges and too light on others, those are things that can be cleaned up before you even bring it into your background. But right now I'm ready. I've got it here. So next I go back to assignment one. And I'm going to open up that PSD file. Not my JPEG, because that's flattened. I want all the different layers. So I'm going to open that up. Again, this should be full resolution. Printing, you know, between 8 8 by 10 inches and 13 by 19 inches at 350 pixels per inch. And it's always a good idea to check your resolution. You don't want to screw that up. So yeah, it's around 13 by 19 by 350. That's great. And it's got all these different layers. I'm going to go to the very top layer. And then I am going to drag and drop the PNG I saved of my creature. So this is a single transparent layer. And it shows me it fits it in. I can shrink it down a little bit. I want to fit him, you know, right in the pond right here. Drinking from this magical pool. Oh, it'd be amazing. Hit return to place it because I uh, dragged and dropped it from the desktop. It's a smart object, which means as I transform it, it will always match the resolution given. Right? And so it's a good idea to keep it as a smart object there, and that's why it's a good idea to clean it up before you bring it in. But now I'm going to duplicate that smart object. And I'm going to rasterize it by right-clicking and rasterizing. So now it's, it's pixels that I can uh, erase and I can edit the color of. And right now it's floating on top of everything. But this is kind of what's amazing about using texture fills and some of these special effects we added at the end of assignment one. If I simply move that layer down through the image, down underneath the texture fills, you see that? That's going to be very helpful. Down underneath my, my foreground layer, and I'm using the shortcut of command left bracket to move it down. See what happens there? We start overlapping elements. They might not be all the right ones, but it's worth playing with. And then if I move it that far, that's a little too much, right? This isn't a Terminator movie. Not Terminator, what am I thinking of? Predator movie, where he camouflages into the jungle. So, so that's about as deep as I can push it. Now that's a big difference than this already. And I haven't done anything to my creature design except push it down through these layers of atmosphere, right? That I've built up here. And that helps it to fit. But you'll notice it doesn't quite fit. My background feels kind of green and blue. Uh, my character feels very warm and yellow and bright. And so the next thing I can play with is just simple adjustments, simple adjustments of first levels. How light or dark should it be? And my lighting is really soft in the background, so I'm not going to really increase the highlights or shadows on my creature. This isn't direct light, but I might decide to, to deepen or brighten the midtones. I might brighten the midtones a little bit there. I might darken the shadows just a touch underneath. I might even limit the highlights. That helps a little bit, so it's not catching as much light as the brightest parts of the landscape. I can limit my shadows, but I don't think that's going to make sense here. And it's not so much about showing off your character as having it believably integrated into the landscape. So let's see if that change made a difference. It's very subtle, just taking the brightness off of it. Help it sink in a little bit more. 
Now my favorite step, adjustments in color balance. And here's where I can make the temperature of the color match better. So first, the midtones. I feel like my character is a little too warm, a little too yellow and red. So let me push it a little bit towards cyan and blue, maybe a bit towards the green. The highlights. You can leave those a little bit warmer, but mute the reds. So what would this fur look like in this environment? It wouldn't be so bronze. And then the shadows, I tend to go pretty cool with shadows. And then you can balance it, so go back to my, my mid-tones and maybe back it up a bit. Okay, so let's see if that made any difference very warm and um, brown looking there <laughs> really stands out now it feels more like what those colors would look like in this environment what those tones would look like now if you're unsure of these steps because they're big steps what you can do is make a duplicate layer that's why I have this smart one on the top that's what I came in with and that's what I have now so slowly, slowly, without doing too much that's too complicated, I'm integrating the, the character into the setting. Okay. Now I haven't affected the background at all yet. And so now, I wanna look at what I have. I have my character letter, layer. I might right click next to the eyeball and make it a color so I can find that character layer very easily. and I'm looking at the different edges and what's coming through and yes that white doesn't make sense so now I'm gonna look at the character and see if there's anything I need to cut out anything I need to soften or work with definitely use a tablet and a stylus to make these fine little adjustments so I'm using a low opacity eraser here not that low, but lessened opacity eraser. <laughs> you can see how that, that mist texture is coming through and around. That's nice. I can use my clone stamp. That great trick. I'm doing it right onto my creature layer though here. I want to get rid of some of these really bright highlights. Soften that edge a little. All right. So now my creature is intact. I haven't erased anything uh, structural from it. I've just kind of improved its coloring. Now I want to turn this into an overlay layer. Okay, so I'm going to make a duplicate of that. And then I'm going to make a new blank layer. And I'm going to say edit fill that new blank layer. But instead of filling it with white as we have in the past, we've only done this once, but I'm going to fill it with middle gray, 50% gray, 100% opaque fill. Okay, and I'm going to move that behind my character. And then I'm going to take both of those layers, select them both, and move them up to the top. And this is what I have. So this is an overlay layer, and this is how it works. Select the gray layer, and you're going to dodge and burn on that layer. So if you want a shadow underneath your creature, notice I'm not on my character layer, I'm on this gray layer underneath. And I'm just gonna, with a very soft brush at a fairly low exposure, I know there needs to be a shadow underneath my, my creature. 
And so I'm going to 